Well, hello, retro computing enthusiasts. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Once again, we have the Naboo up on the workbench, and um, getting back into into hacking the Naboo. I took a break from it to work on my Jazz 80 breadboard retro computer, and I, I got made a lot of progress on it. I got to a good stopping point on it. I'll put a link in the upper right. If you want to check out the playlist on the Jazz 80 retro computer, you may find it interesting too, if you're into this Nabu stuff. But anyway, I got to a good stopping point on it and decided to get back to um, working on the Nabu because I had some ideas about what I wanted to do with it. Just to refresh your memory, my idea with the Nabu was to make it into a standalone computer, okay? Just plug it in, turn it on. And, you know, you've got basic in-ROM, you've got a monitor on there. You can do all kinds of stuff. So let's fire up the old Nabu here. And, yep, immediately we go into, we go right into my Jazz 80 monitor screen here. And we've got all the options we had before. Standalone Nabu project, it says. Um, got basic in-ROM, we've got all these monitor functions. Um, just right when you turn it on, you don't have to be connected to anything else. But, but... We've got a new entry on the menu. What's this down here? Ooh, run original Nabu firmware. What's that all about? What happens if I hit N on the keyboard? Ooh, hey, look at that. Yeah. So since I have 32K of bank switched EEPROM in my Nabu here, um, there's plenty of space for the original Nabu firmware in there. Now, it's not without its issues. As we can see, it's taking a little while longer than normal to boot up. And it's going to give us an error, but it's just going to keep loading. Adapter failure. Yeah. Yep, because I've, uh, I've got the RetroNet stuff running down here on my laptop. So, we've got access to all the cool software that's available on RetroNet. We've got DJ Schur's uh, Nabu Cloud CPM up here now. He'll be happy to see that when he sees this video, I'm sure. But um, uh, several of my viewers had said, hey, now that you've got bank switching in the EEPROM and you could have up to 32K of, of, of code in your Nabu, why not put the original 4K ROM in there somewhere? 4K or 8K, either one would fit plenty because I'm switching in and out 8K banks. I'll give you a quick look at the bank switching hardware, how it's set up. Now, what I'm showing you here assumes that you have implemented the sort of 32K EEPROM and bank switching that I talked about in a previous video where I am using two unused bits from the control register to bank switch my 32K of EEPROMs, switching in and out 8K banks of EEPROM. So I will put a link to that previous video in the upper right if you haven't seen it so you can check out how I am doing that, how I'm getting... 32k of EEPROM in my NABU and uh, if you want to do what I'm doing here you'll need to implement something similar and I have an idea for a better bank switching method in the future which we'll talk about later in this video so let's get back to the demo so yeah so we've got access to all of the the retro net stuff now as well as just being standalone um, so I've been playing around a lot in CPM here, uh, having a lot of fun. There's a lot of neat uh, applications in there. There's a lot of neat games. And uh, just doing all kinds of stuff. Um, and we could come over here. We could look at some other things, too. Let me uh, set up their uh, slideshow gallery. And uh, we'll reboot the old Nabu here. And let me select N again. And while it's loading, yeah, um, the problem here is that uh, I'm using the uh, two unused bits on the control register for my bank switching on the EEPROM. And, well, the, the NABU firmware touches the control register seven times, at least in the 4K ROM I have. And um, I have to modify the code in at least seven places to prevent it from going off into la-la land every time it touches the... Uh, the control register and uh, some of my modifications have made it think it has an adapter failure even though it isn't it actually it's working fine 
Um, I think I know what the problem is, but it's kind of hard to get around because, uh, oh, got music too, yeah. Let me turn that down a bit so you can hear me. It's kind of a hard problem to get around because I think what's happening is the Nabu firmware, um, when it writes a byte out to, uh, the control register it saves that byte off in a variable and I think it's using the unused two bits in that variable um, to track hardware problems I suspect anyway and somehow it thinks uh, that this is creating a hardware issue even though it's not so it just goes ahead and boots up and keeps working just like it ought to um, I figured out a way around that and it's something I've wanted to do anyway. I think I'm going to implement a different um, bank switching scheme. I think I'm going to build myself an expansion card to plug into one of the expansion ports on the NABU. It's going to have a dedicated latch on it for the bank switching. Something that the NABU firmware doesn't know anything about and won't mess with. And uh, that should solve this problem plus having uh, an expansion card in there I can do a lot of other stuff um, I would like to implement uh, mass storage on either an SD card or a CF card or something like that and you know some other possibilities too and just having a card that I can plug into one of the expansion ports I could build all kinds of stuff on that and give the NABU all kinds of new functionality so yeah that's, I think, is where the direction I'm going to go down the road. I think I'm going to go with, you know, a hardware, a, a, a hardware expansion card, and get away from using the, uh, the the control port for doing my bank switching. And you know, I could bank switch a lot more ROM that way. Uh, I'm, I've only got two bits right now, which allows me to switch in and out four 8K banks. But you know, hey. I could go with a full 8 bits or more. And wow, we could get a lot of software stuffed into the NABU right at boot up, unconnected from anything else. So, you know, that's a possibility. So, this is just a quick video, show you what I've done. Um, I'll have a write up on my blog about where everything is in the EEPROM. Basically, uh, my monitor is at zero so the z80 finds it on boot up okay grant Searle's basic is at uh 2000 hex and the the nabu rom is at 4000 hex so the nabu the end command down there what it does is it it just changes the uh the bank switching so that uh 4000 hex becomes zero hex and it just restarts the computer and yeah the original nabu firmware runs so that's the way that works um i will have an updated version of the monitor on my blog about the time this video comes out and in fact i may have an image of the rom i'm using now that might be, make more sense um if you want to try this out at, you know if you're following along at home and you want to try this out you could just burn an image of the rom i'm using now with the monitor in it Grant Searle's basic in it, and the NABU code in it. And you know what? There's still room for other stuff, even with the current bank switching scheme. So, oh, and real quick before I bring this video to an end, it's just going to be a quick video. Um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about joysticks. I've seen several people asking about what kind of joysticks you can use with your NABU, because it doesn't come with joysticks, of course. Um, just any Atari-style joystick will work just fine with the NABU. Just you know, look for Atari style joysticks, uh, Amazon, eBay, wherever. I'll put a link in the description of this video to where you can get one. I mean, this was like, I don't know, eight or nine dollar joystick I got off of Amazon. Cheapest one on there, works fine. So there you go, Atari style joysticks. If you wanna play the NABU game goodness, um, you can get yourself a joystick and have at it. Anyway, just a, just a quick video. Um, wanted to show you what I've been up to, and by popular demand, yes, okay, we have the original NABU firmware 
included along with all the other stuff now. Alrighty. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you found this video interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to see my future videos. There'll be more Naboo hacking stuff coming down the lane. And I will see you in future videos. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.